evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out today. I'm very delighted to see so many people. Um, thank you so much. Before I talk about my book, I just want to ask everybody, have you actually heard of the word Lascar or know the meaning of the word Lascar? Can you put your hands up so I can see? All right. That's interesting, that's interesting. The word Lascar is not used very much today at all. Um, I'm going to tell you a, a little bit uh, about myself before I talk about the history of Lasker. Um, I was born in Cambridge um, in 1971 and I've grown up here. My father came from East Pakistan in 1957. Uh, East Pakistan became Bangladesh in 1971. And my paternal ancestor was uh, a Lasker. We've heard stories passed down orally through generations. And the family history aspect of it uh, inspired me to write the novel. Now, it's my first historical novel, and I've had other work published, so you can visit my website for more information about my work. All the details are down here on this banner. So I wanted to write the novel in a fresh and contemporary way for a new generation of a modern audience. So I took a bit of history to make it more interesting, because some people do find history quite boring. Um, and the history of Laskas has largely been forgotten in history. And I wrote it to highlight the plight of Laskas and to revive the story of the forgotten seamen. So publishing is about art and luck. Um, it was a long and frustrating progress um, to get this book published. Any writer will tell you the same story. So I wouldn't be standing here today if I gave up two years ago because that's exactly what I wanted to do. But uh, my book was um, accepted last year and it was published on the 4th of June last, last Monday. So I'll start with a brief history of Lascars and I'll move on and talk about my book. So please listen carefully to the story of Lascar. Now who are Lascars? The word Lascar points to a rich and unique aspect of world history. So many people think that aging men first began to arrive in England in, uh, just after the Second World War. But in fact, there was already a small, sizable South Asian population in Great Britain in the 16th and 17th century. So not all were sailors. Some came here to study. Uh, some were professionals. There were lawyers and doctors. Some even became politicians. But the majority of them came as sailors. And it was a name given by the Europeans to describe the non-European sailors. And as you can see, it comes from three words, and they all have a similar meaning. It's to do with army, soldier, and seamen. Now, where did Lascars come from? Well, they came from the Indian subcontinent and other countries east of the Cape of Good Hope. And this was the initial East Indies. So they came from these three continents here. But by the 1860s, it referred to men from the region of present-day Bangladesh. At the time, it was Eastern India and also uh, men that actually came from China as well. So the majority of them are Muslim, although there are many Christian, Catholic, and Hindu Laskars. And Laskars were led to believe that they'd enjoy a good life and earn good money working on these ships and visit rich foreign lands. Now you can see this uh, group of Laskars, and this is dated uh, early 1800s. And I'm particularly going to talk about the 19th century Asian Laskars. Now here's uh, uh, an image of the uh, East India Trading Company ship and Laskars were recruited to work aboard ships like these. Um, and the tr traditional use of Laskars started in the early days of the British East India Company dating back to the 17th century on merchant ships trading with Britain. Now for those of, the, for those of you that don't know, the East India Company was set up to establish trade routes and to discover and bring back new goods and in doing so, broke down the geographical barriers of the world. Now, British men initially worked aboard these ships, but the death rate amongst the British seamen was very high due to the long voyages. So many actually deserted ship once the ships re reached India, because it used to take three to four months to actually travel from England to India. So Laskars were employed to replace most of these seamen. So Laskar isn't just an Asian story, but it's about a multiracial crew who worked alongside with the British seamen. 
but they were paid much less than the British seamen. And they weren't hired as individual sailors, they were hired as a team of sailors. And they were recruited in Calcutta, and they were employed throwing back cargoes containing tea, sugar, coffee, silk, cotton, spices, and porcelain to Britain. So as shipping increased, so did the number of Lascars. And they were promised their passage home, so many had no intention of settling in England. So Lascars worked in the engine rooms, stoking the engines, where the temperatures could easily reach 40 degrees or more. Now, they were considered able to stand the heat of the engines because they came from hot climates. So others were cleaners, cooks, coal carriers, and oiled machinery, and very few worked on deck because of the uh, language barrier. So once arriving into port, it was their duty to ensure the ship was unloaded. So you can see uh, this illustration here, they're unloading mail bags. And this was actually drawn in the, uh, uh, the 19th century. But later in the 19th century, um, a book was published, um, it's a dictionary, it's called a Lascari Dictionary, and this was actually used by the ship's captain, and uh, so he could actually communicate with the Lascars, because he couldn't, they couldn't understand any English, so this really helped them, so I'll be putting this over on the table later so you can all have a look at that. So they received an unbalanced diet, and this resulted in severe health problems, and most of them fell ill, and they denied proper medical assistance. And many Lascars were cruelly treated. Uh, there were tales of Muslim Lascars being made to eat pork, and they had pigtails rammed into their mouths. Uh, many were flogged. They were hung up with weights tied to their feet, wounding some of them fatally. So, but there were many other Lascars who were treated very well by their ship's captain, and they worked alongside very happily with British seamen. Now here's a 19th century image of Alaska and you can see he's begging and he's a street sweeper. So because of the harsh conditions and ill treatment on board, many Alaskas upon landing in seaport towns of Britain remained and they didn't take the ship back home. So they did a deserted ship and they chose the chance for a better life working in shipyards and railroads. Many more were abandoned without wages by their unscrupulous employers to fend for themselves so, but others waited for a return journey, but they often found that it was delayed for many weeks. So many Laskers lived desperate lives of poverty, you can see in this image here. Many became destitute and they were sent to local workhouses. Other Laskers had to find ways to survive and they eked out existences such as they became street sweepers, musicians, where they danced in front of large audiences. They sang in their own language as well. Uh, basket makers, peddlers, cleaners, artists, but most of them did resort to begging. Um, most of them settled in the London Dockland areas, such as Shadwell, Wapping and Poplar. But the majority of the Laskars, some of them actually did set up cafes and restaurants and hotels. And so are born the first Indian restaurants of today. So some estimated about 10% of all seamen actually died and that's a quite a big number because in the middle of the 19th century there were thousands and thousands coming every year and most of them did end up settling in Britain. So poverty and prejudice went hand in hand and it gave them little opportunities for socialising. Now here's an image of the stranger's home for the Asiatics. Um, Laskers were unable to find shelter against the British winters and many perished on the streets. Um, winters were much more severe in the 19th century than they are today and for instance in January 1811 the whole of the River Thames froze over so can you imagine how cold that, that was at that time and they actually held a winter fair on the River Thames on that year but I think uh, the winter of 1813 was actually one of the coldest on record and around nine Laskas were dying every year but I think the most notable deaths would be in 1850, where 40 Asian men, they were known as the Sons of India, were found dead of cold and hunger on one single day. And that was a huge number to find that many Laskas dead on one street. So many did live in hostels, uh, but the living conditions were absolutely appalling. They had no bedding, no furniture, no fireplaces. And many were, were victimised by lodging housekeepers and some houses actually became opium dens as well. So this prompted the founding of the Strangers' Home for the Asiatics, 
the Africans and the South Sea Islanders. So at the time, Asian people were called Asiatics. And it was set up by a Christian missionary group led by Joseph Salter in June 1857. And Christian missionary groups really did go out of the way to help these men. And it provided temporary accommodation for up to about 200 Alaskas at a time. And it was a safe haven for them. So missionaries, they did sympathize with Alaskas, but there were other missionaries that saw them as being wicked people. They, they weren't fit for proper housing. Um, and this building actually closed down in 1937 due to the lack of funding. Um, it's being replaced by a block of flats and it stands next to the Limehouse Police Station in London. So most of these men actually settled down and took local white British wives due to the lack of Asian women at the time in Britain. And this was seen as unacceptable and a disgrace to Victorian society. So some of these women actually set up lodging houses. Uh, they were given nicknames such as uh, Alaska Sally and Calcutta Louise and Chinese Emma. Uh, but they were sort of really as outcasts in their own society because they did this. So just to round off some brief history, for over 350 years, Alaska has played a very important role ensuring goods reached India um, sorry, ensuring goods from India reached British ports safely in times of peace and war. But by the eve of the First World War, there are over 50,000 Alaskas in Britain, and many had, had no choice but to contribute to the war efforts, which they hadn't bargained for. And their loyalty was surprising, despite fighting for a country that wasn't their own, but for a country that didn't embrace them. And you can see... Um, this photograph here was taken in 1908 and it's a group of Laskers on a, on a steamship. So small settlements of Laskers grew in London and other port cities. Now I'll move on and tell you uh, about my book. And it's simply called Lasker. And it's set in the 1860s and it's the story of one man's journey to fulfill his destiny. And the story begins in Silet, Eastern India. Today it's in Bangladesh. And Ayan, the main character, he realises his dream of becoming Alaska. His father was Alaska and he wanted to follow his father's footsteps. And he thinks that his father had a privileged life working on board a steamship. But also his brother, Kazi, develops cancer due to the constant chewing of beetle nuts. And so Ayan decides to take to the sea to help his ailing brother. But the harsh reality of working on a trading ship leaves him fearing for his life. And Ayan and his friends, they escape the ship uh, to the bitter cold streets of Victoria, London. And there he experiences loss, love, prejudice and extreme injustice. And in my novel I actually mention the Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Um, and it fits quite well with the Jubilee um, celebration that we've had as well. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about the cover. I chose that cover. It actually comes from... Uh, a British illustrated weekly newspaper that was actually published in 1869. And this newspaper told the news in images. Um, but the paper ceased publication in about 1932. So you can see this, these images actually tell the story on my novel. And you can see this lady here. Um, she's actually a Hindu woman on a toilet. Um, it actually says that on that newspaper. Um, but I think she was actually... Uh, an Indian nursemaid who looked after British children at the time, and she was called an Aya. Uh, I had uh, some special illustrations drawn for my book. Um, here's Ayan and his brother, Kazi, working in their own shop. It's a rice shop, and they sold beetle nuts. Here's Ayan working on board a steamship, stoking the engines. And you can see here he's not treated uh, very well indeed. Uh, at that time, Laskas were uh, cruelly whipped and treated very badly. And Ayan earns money by busking on the streets of London, which was common for many Laskars. And they sang traditional Bengali songs and they danced in front of large audiences. And uh, British people were actually very intrigued by this. Ayan marries a British woman and she's called Phoebe. And this was seen as unacceptable to the society. Now, I wrote um, a radio play back in 2009, which was based on my novel. Uh, and it was produced by Silsila Productions in London and they produced it as a teaching pack and distributed it to schools uh, in East London. 
And I'd just like to play you just a, a very short clip, it's only about a minute long, just to give you a flavour of the novel. So I do hope you enjoy listening to this bit. Shh. They might have gone this direction. Well, I don't see anything. So let's get back to the ship. That scars are crafty. They'll set a trap. They're animals. And I'm not risking my life over these darkies. But what will we tell the captain? We'll tell him. We took care of them. Why didn't I think of that? Well, that's why you're number two and I'm number one. Look around, Ian. Look around. It's London. I should go to love. There are so many people. <laughs> yes, my friend. And they are all free, like you and me. We shall begin a new life here, independent at last. Able to do as we please, able to go where we please. This is the start of something truly grand. Yes, it is, Akbar. Yes, it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed that part. It, it, it's a clip where they've just escaped the ship and they have being followed by two guards. I do hope you'll all buy a copy of my book. Uh, I'll be happy to sign them over here. And please enjoy some food. Um, that's available to everybody. There's some drinks there as well. So thanks again, everyone, for coming out today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.